Shalom Mishpacha, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to our home on this wonderful, wonderful Arab Shabbat. We greet you warmly from our house to yours, and we remind you on this awesome Shabbat about God's word and about what God says in Joshua, Joshua 22, 5. Be very careful to observe the mitzvot, his commandments, and his Torah, which the servant of Adonai commanded you to love Adonai your God and walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. Cling to him, cling to him and worship him with all your heart and all your soul. And that's what we're doing tonight as we bring forth his word. We cling to him just as we ask you, cling to him and just ask him to help you as we have asked him tonight to help us to enter into his holy Shabbat, into his rest. Shabbat Shalom. Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> yes, don't you love entering into his rest? You know, I was walking today. I walked, um, I do my fast walking. I walked over six miles today. And I was doing it, I did it for a couple of hours. And, you know, I just felt like I said, God, I want to come into your presence, into your rest. I just, your, your glory, your, I just want to be filled with you. And I felt the presence of the Lord. And it was just, it was just so wonderful just to enter into, enter into his rest. And then, um, and then I had um, some music on, you know, in my earplugs. And it was just so beautiful. I was just at different times, I was just lifting my hands up to the Lord. It was just worshiping, just so, so beautiful. Yeah. So praise God. It is Shabbat. I'm Dr. Charlie Kluge. I'm the rabbi of the congregation Shuvi Israel of the Palm Beaches. And, welcome. and, and uh, we welcome you. And we're also Rabbi Congregation Geshe Shalom our online congregation and uh, it's Shuvi Israel. Did I say Geshe it's Shalom? Geshe Shalom. Oh, well, <laughs> well we, we actually have um, a ministry of Geshe, Geshe Shalom. Geshe, that we Geshe International. Geshe International and Geshe Shalom, and Geshe Shalom yeah. which, which we have. We don't have the one we used to have, but we still have, we still have that. So, yes. so praise, praise God. <laughs> praise God. And we just welcome you into, into our home. It's just so wonderful. So let us begin with our Erev Shabbat liturgy. And we continue with the Greenberg Sidor. And page three. Laka Dodi, Likra Kala, Pene Shabbat, Nikabla. Shamor Vizachor, Bibor Achad Shimi, I knew El Hamiyuchad, Adonai Achad, Ushmo Achad, the same Utaparat, Liki La. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we, re we receive. Observe and remember in one divine utterance we heard from the one and only God. The Lord is one and is named one for renown, for splendor, and for praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Shake off the dust, dress in garments of glory, my people, through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken. For, sing a song for the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. So let us remember to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes, Lord. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord. Your God, in it you shall not do any work. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, 
the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Shabbat day and hallowed it. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Above all, my Shabbat you shall keep, for is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Amen. 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 And you know, I was I was speaking to someone, telling them about the Lord, telling them about the Word of God. And the person said to me, he's, he considers himself a religious Jew, but he just hasn't been religious for, ma for many years. And he said, so you speak on Shabbat? I said, yes. And you, you teach on Shabbat and you teach on, on Friday nights, Arab Shabbat? I said, yes. And he said, do you think God wants me to observe the Shabbat like you observe the Shabbat? And I said, well, um, that's his word. And you were religious at one time. So why don't you just, you don't have anything special that you have to say, but get alone with God. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me if I was supposed to observe the Sabbath and I haven't been. And forgive me. If if I've been walk if I've walked away from you, and Lord, draw me close to you any way you want, and um, and if He would do that, that would be that would be awesome. Amen. So we're Amen. praying for Him. Yes. So praise God. Yes. And we read on page thirteen, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Natan Lano et Derek by Yeshua the Mashiach, Yeshua Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And we stand and face east and we say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'elam Pa'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We continue with the Ve'ahavta. We're on page 15. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. 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 And we ask the question, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorified in holiness, your awesome in praise, working wonders, O Lord? Who is like you, O Lord? And the answer, of course, is Ein Kamocha. There is none like you. Amen. And that's why we say, We give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy forever endures. Amen. And we read the Amidah, the standing prayer, the Avot, the Father's portion, page 21, 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohei Avoteinu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yitzchak Velohei Yaakov El Hagado Hagibor Vahanora El Elyon Gomer Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hako Musochea Chaste Avot Umevi Goel Lifne Vinehem Lamaan Shemo Bahava Melech Ozea Umeshiach Umagain Baruch Ata Adonai Magain Abraham Amen. And we read, Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Amen. And we continue, we end um, with the Kaddish. Um, at this time, we remember, uh, we, this past week, we had Yom Hazikaron, the Day of Remembrance, um, the Memorial Day for Israel. And then, of course, the day after, we had Yom HaAtzma'ut, where we celebrated uh, Israel Independence Day. So as we do the Kaddish, we remember all of those who perished serving Israel, giving their life to Israel through their service in the IDF and other areas. Yekidal v'yekidash me rabah v'yoma devra kutev yamlich ma kutev Hey Shalom Rabbam in Shemaya Bahaim Alainu Via Kol Yisrael Bim Ru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Rama. Hu ya se shalom alainu. Via Kol Yisrael Bim Ru Amen. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during the days of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified, and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all the blessings and songs, praises, and consolations which are uttered in the world, and say, Amen. The departed, whom we now remember, have entered into the peace of life eternal. They still live on earth in the acts of goodness they performed and in the hearts of those who cherish their memory. May the beauty of their life abide among us as a loving benediction. And may he who makes his peace, peace in high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel. And we say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the scripture or the Torah portion for tonight begins in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1. And it's called Parsha Tazria. And we are going to speak about, and then we go on a little bit later on in the same parsha. We speak about Metzora, we speak about Metzora, and we are going to not just speak about that, but speak about what it what it means. And so today was the nineteenth day of the counting of the Omer, Sefarat HaOmer. And tonight begins the 20th day. And we say, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam 
Asher Kedishano Bamitzvotah Bitsibano Seferat HaAmer. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us concerning the counting of the Omer. Today is 20 days, which are two weeks and six days of the Omer. Each day of the Omer reminds us how much time is left before his promise, revelation, and renewal. We can say, Abba Father, today is the 20th day of the Omer. 30 more days are left until you, Abba, come and bless us again with a fresh filling of the Ruach HaKodesh, endowing us with the power of God to be a witness in word and in lifestyle that your message will go forth into the world. Amen and amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today we are going to speak about growth in affliction. Tazria and Tazria and um, means she conceives and Metsora means the infected one. And those are times of affliction. Now, when you when it's time to conceive, it's 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 a beautiful, it's an absolutely beautiful time. But um, I can't tell you what it's like to give birth. I know you can tell what it's like, and all of you who know, even though it's most magnificent, it's a time of conception is a time of affliction. And it's also a wonderful, beautiful thing of giving life, of giving life. Amen. Amen. So how do we grow in, in affliction? Well, first I want to go over a couple of words that are mentioned, that we mentioned, the, the Hebrew words that are mentioned in Tazria and Metzara is tuma, which means ritual, ritual, spiritual impurity impurity. Tahara is ritual, spiritual, spiritual purity. So why Tuma is the impurity and Tahara is, is ritual purity. Tame is unclean. Sara'at is, is considered leprosy and it's a different type of leprosy than we know of, than we know of today. But it still, it, it shows what's happening in the spiritual realm in that person. The rabbis had viewed leprosy as an external sign of internal decay because illness became a symbol of corruption and immorality and callousness and self-centeredness and Lashon Hara, speaking hateful things about your neighbor and hateful deeds. And as we read in uh, Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19, says, six things Adonai hates. Yes, seven are abominations to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet that run to evil, a false witness who spouts lies, and one who stirs up strife among brothers. These things are, are spiritual leprosy, spiritual areas that we need to, that we need to get rid of. A story is told of a wandering merchant who came into a town square offering to sell the elixir of life. Wouldn't you want the elixir of life? Yes, of course. But we have the elixir of life. The elixir of life is, is Yeshua. We have Yeshua. He lives within us. He's the elixir. But this, this, um, this merchant came in to the elixir of life, and a um, large crowd surrounded him, each person eager to purchase eternal youth. When pressed, the merchant would bring out the book of Psalms and read them the verse. Who desires life? Keep your tongue from evil 
and your lips from guile. And that merchant had something that he's telling us today. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from guile. So in Leviticus 12.1, after the laws of, of Tuma, um, spiritual impurity that results from getting in contact with dead animals, the Torah turns to the, the Tuma that emanates from human beings. The spiritual impurity that comes from human beings. The, the first subject uh, is the first subject is that a woman, and this is in the scripture, the woman who gives birth because it's the beginning of life and therefore the start of the Tuma in the, in the process. New life begins with Tuma to show people that mere, mere life is not enough. Life must be a tool. Life must be a service to God. And after this period of contamination, the, the new mother, begins her cleansing process, culminated by the bringing of an offering. Each thing, whenever something wonderful happens, whenever something great happens, we bring an offering. We bring an offering to God. And the mere absence of contamination is not enough. Human aspiration must rise higher than, than the absence of the negative. It must strive for positive achievement. And must strive for being a vessel of the Almighty God. And that's what we have that takes place during Sephirat HaOmer, the counting of the Omer. When we count the Omer, we spend time with God and asking, us, uh, asking Him to cleanse us, cleanse us from all that is within us, our anger, our unforgiveness, so many different things that are that are within us. So many different things. And that's what God helps us and shows us in the time of the Sephirat HaOmer. Ha and what we read in Leviticus 13, in Leviticus 13, verse 13, we read that and let's begin at verse 9. When one has a plague of Tzara'at, he is to be brought to the Kohen. The Kohen is to examine him and behold that there is a white swelling in the skin and has turned the hair white. And if there's raw flesh in the swelling, it is chronic Tzara'at in the skin of the flesh. And the Kohen is to pronounce him unclean. He is to isolate him for he is, for he is unclean. And so the priest examines him, and it's really interesting. If his whole body turned white, that, or if it all turned white, uh, then he is he's considered clean. But if a person is totally covered, then he is totally clean. But if he has just a little bit, a little bit, on him, he's considered unclean, unclean, because the um, it's it's a hint about the spiritual nature of the person. In other words, the the experts, the rabbis, the um, those who study and those who had a close relationship to Hashem. They argued that Sa'arat refers not to a bodily disease, but to a physical manifestation of a spiritual malice, a punishment designed to show a malefactor that he must mend his ways, or she must mend her ways. In other words, Sa'arat is not so much a disease as a form of, it is a form of supernatural discipline. Not that much of disease, but of supernatural discipline. The biblical treatment of Sa'arat was complete isolation. Leviticus 13.45 says, As for the leper who has the infection, his clothes shall be torn, and the hair of his head shall be uncovered, 
and he shall cover his mustache and cry, unclean, unclean. We have to remove, God wants us to remove the hermits from us. We studied that on, on uh, Passover. He wants, and that's in uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13, it's about removing the hermits from, your, from yourself, from your house. We have to not be unclean. And if we are spiritually unclean, then, then Hashem will pour upon us this, um, this supernatural spiritual discipline. And it, we pray that it doesn't happen in, in, in these days, but it did happen in those days. But God shows us that we have afflictions. In all things in our life, there are, there are afflictions. And um, we see one of the main causes of afflictions is Lashon Hara, the evil tongue. In Numbers 12, Miriam slandered her brother and broke out with what? Sarah. It was true that Moses had a Cushite wife, but repeating even the truth with selfish or prideful motives is sin. It is sin. Why did Miriam and Aaron? Said, why did they speak about his wife? Should not Miriam and Aaron, and Aaron just loved Moses, which they did, and loved his wife, not judging his wife? Why did they do it? Why did they complain? Why were they fetching about her? Because it's pride. It's all pride. Pride is a spiritual malice. It is, um, it is not something to make light of. People tend to make light of the sins of the tongue, of gossip, of backbiting, of tailbearing, even of joking to one another when you're joking about the other person's qualities. If you're joking about it, and we all love, we all love um, Don Rickles and, um, and, we, and so many of the comedians who I can't even, I can't even, uh, Jackie Mason, he's the one I was thinking. We all, we all love, love his comedy. But the thing is, we can't be joking about somebody's weakness. That is Lashon Hara. So Numbers 12, 9 to 13 says, Adonai's anger burned against them and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above, from above the tent, behold, Miriam had Sa'arat like snow. As Aaron turned toward her, behold, she had Sa'arat. He said to Moses, please, my Lord, don't hold against us the sin we have committed so foolishly. So Moses, verse 13, so Moses cried to Adonai saying, oh God, Please heal her now, heal her now. Instead of responding with the words of vindication, Moses responded with love. He's interceded for his sister. These are things we have to pray about. These are things that we not pray about is whether to do. These are things we have to pray for. Instead, of keeping and saying to people, you, you, I'm criticizing you about this, you do this wrong, you do that wrong, let us love them. Let us pray for them. Let us intercede for them. So in this case, Moses foreshadowed Mashiach, who, Mashiach who healed many who were afflicted with Sa'arat. He went to the lepers. He went to the prostitutes. He went to all the poor people. He went to the people. And, and when I say to all the poor people, it's because in those days, where it was thought that people who were poor were people who didn't have a relationship with God, who didn't follow God's ways, because people always thought that God is blessing each and every one of his people. And Hashem did heal her but insisted that Miriam be excluded from the camp for seven days. 
And what was the purpose of this exclusion? Um, and the she the purpose of the exclusion was like her not being in the camp was like her crying out saying unclean unclean i'm unclean i'm unclean and so she was not in the camp for a week but to and but this brought about a, her complete repentance from within and humility is the antidote for pride. Lashon Hara is the most widely disobeyed of all of his commandments. Leviticus 19.16 teaches, do not go about as a slanderer among your people. Jacob 4.11 to 12. In your Bible, you may have it as James, but it's, but it's Jacob. Jacob 4.11 to 12 repeats this commandment. Do not speak against one another, brethren, the one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the Torah and judges the Torah. And so if you're speaking negative about someone, if you're listening tonight and you speak negatively about someone all the time, what you are doing is you're judging the Torah. You're not a, then you're not a doer of the Torah, but then you become a judge of the Torah. But the bottom line is there's only one judge of the Torah, only one lawgiver, and only one judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. Who are you, says the Lord, who judges your neighbor? Yeshua, our chief rabbi, says in Matthew 12, verse 35 to 36, I tell you that on the, on the day of judgment, men will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That's why we have time set aside, like in the month of Elul, or in the Sephirat HaOmer, times of seeking the Lord, times of repentance, times of asking God, cleanse me from this, cleanse me from that. We want to get rid of that, of the things in the supernatural that we have, that shouldn't be within us. Our words have the power to either build up or to tear down. With our words, we can edify, we can build up, we can build up trust, we can build up respect, we can build up community, or we can destroy. We can tear down reputation. We can tear, and when sometimes people get so angry with someone that they like to make up lies and tear down somebody's reputation. They, they can, can tear down relationships, tear down spiritual intimacy. In 2 Corinthians 12, 20, Rabbi Shaul lists the sins of strife, envy, jealousy. These are all afflictions. These are spiritual afflictions that we have. And if we continue to give them up to God, to repent, if we continue with that and recognize these things, we can grow even with affliction. Rabbi Shaul lists the sins of strife, envy, jealousy, outbursts of anger, faction, slander, gossip, arrogance and disorder, self-seeking, disputes, lashon hara, gossip, arrogance, unruly commotions. How much damage it does to a mishpacha. How much damage it does to husbands and to wives. How much damage it does to the synagogues, to the churches. How much damage does it do, does it do to the community? That's what happened with Miriam and Aaron. It was true, but what was the point of bringing it up? Only to tear him down. So what that they didn't like where his wife was from? Are they the judge? They did wrong, but they repented. And God always gives us a chance to repent. Even this truth spoken negatively is destructive. Proverbs 16, verse 27 and 28. 
says an ungodly or a worthless man digs up evil while his lips are as a scorching fire. A perverse man spreads strife and a slanderer separates intimate friends. He who clarifies or rationalizes his behavior is one that is not repentant. Do not rationalize your evil behavior. Lashon Hara is itself a symptom, a symptom triggered by the inner condition of your heart. Through, through Tsa'arat, God rebuked pride. Pride leads to resentful speech. And what you have is the overflow of a sick heart. The sins of the tongue and the outburst of emotions, like rage or resentment, have a deeper source. They come from the heart. You're holding something in. In Matthew 15, 18 to 20, Rabbi Yeshua says, the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are things that make a man unclean. And we all go through these things, but we have to repent. We have to clean up our act. Isaiah 64, 6 says, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like shmatas, like filthy rags. Surely this is a picture of the unclean Netzara, the leper, covering himself in filthy rags. So the prophet says, all human attempts to cover up one's sins with righteousness, your own sadaka, is futile. Why has Hashem given us this picture of the unclean Metzara in filthy rags of self-righteousness? So that we may have reverent fear for him. So we may repent and be restored to him and the heavenly community. For the mercy of our God is awesome. God accepted Moses intercession for his sister and God supernaturally cleansed her Sa'ara. The purpose of her exclusion was not to reject her. It was to give her an opportunity to repent and be restored to the community. As the word says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Where does this come from? The spiritual impurity it comes all the way from the Gan Eden, from the eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That wasn't the beginning of the sin. The beginning of the sin was Adam had to enter a state of spiritual impurity where he was distant from God. It was the thoughts in his mind, investigating and thinking, is this touching? It, did it cause him to eat? Is, did, did God say not to eat from that tree? You see, it's not the touching of the fruit. It's not the eating of the fruit. As Yeshua says, it's the sin of the heart that is the problem. So we, God allows these afflictions for us. Different afflictions that we have, God allows. We all have different afflictions in our life. But if we could look at the afflictions that we have in our day, in our, in our days of today and tomorrow, and if we can look at those afflictions and say, thank you, Lord, because I know there will be growth out of this. I trust you. Sometimes he's just testing us to see if we can trust him, to see if we can trust him. We have to, really, we have to remember 
as Luke 5, 13, it says, Yeshua says to a Metzora, a leper, I, where the, the Metzora said, if you were willing, would you heal me? And, he, and Yeshua said, I am willing, be clean. This is why Messiah came into the world, not to condemn, but to save. He's willing to, he's willing to clean each and every one of us. Because we can't cleanse ourselves, we can't redeem ourselves. He came to redeem us. And after he was whipped and scourged and stripped and hung on a tree, he looked like a man covered from head to toe with sa'arat. He who was completely without sin, a spotless lamb, took upon himself all the sin of the world that we might be, that we might be clean. And we read from Philippians, we read from Philippians 1, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advancement of the good news. He was in chains. He was even proclaiming Messiah while he was in chains. And so my imprisonment in the cause, in the cause of Messiah has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and to everyone else. Because of my imprisonment, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord to dare more than ever to speak the message fearlessly. Some are proclaiming the Messiah out of envy and strife, but others out of goodwill. And those are the ones who do so out of, out of love. And they know that, as he was saying, as Rav Shaul was saying, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the good news. And I believe each and every one of us who are, appoint, are appointed for the defense of the good news, we're all to be speaking about our Messiah. We are not to speak of Messiah out of selfishness, expect as I'm speaking in Philippians chapter one now, expecting to stir up trouble but what does it matter? Only that in every way, whether in dishonesty or in truth, Messiah is being proclaimed. In all things, Messiah was being proclaimed. And in this, Rabbi Shaul said, I rejoice. So what we know is that we should not waste our time when we are afflicted. We rarely consider that Rabbi Shaul's worst afflictions came at the hands of those who call themselves born-again believers. Some opponents were envious church leaders who turned entire congregations against him. And they were envious church leaders and envious synagogue leaders. They ridiculed his lifestyle, criticized his preaching, questioned his authority, and misrepresented his message. Lashon Hara. And Rabbi Shaul said, none of these things move me. He also added that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this, for in fact, we told you before that we were with you. We would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. So what is he saying? He's saying that there is growth, growth 
in afflictions, no matter what our affliction is. And God knows how to allow us to go through these trials and tribulations, the things with things that are close to us. Whatever affliction you're having now, whatever trial and tribulation you're having now, spend your time with Yeshua. Spend your time with the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach. Continue Sephirat HaOmer. Continue counting the Omer. Continue every day or every night asking the Lord to take away some of those things that hold you back. I try to do that every day. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I, sometimes I will feel a change taking place within me. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes my anger will hold me back. All of us have trials and tribulations. Let us rejoice that we know Messiah. Let us rejoice at that. And let us understand that no matter what, we are in the family, the mishpacha of Messiah. Let us give him the glory and ask him today and just if you want to follow me with your prayer father god in the name of yeshua remove from me all that is unclean thank you lord in yeshua's name we pray amen and amen 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 Thank you, Rabbi, for that very deep and enlightening message. This is the time during the service that we take up an offering for Shuva Yisrael. And as we uh, know, as Rabbi spoke today, uh, there are healings for those that trust in him. And the Lord wants us to trust in him in every way, in every single way. And in Matthew 8, when Yeshua said to the centurion, go, as you have believed, let it be done for you. And that's how he received his healing. And the servant was healed in that hour. And it's the same thing as giving an offering, as we do to others, as have we believed to help those in need. That's how it's done to us. Scripture says, give, and it will be given to you, pressed down and overflowing. We need to trust and have faith, and we have to know that God wants us to give to help others. And so we thank all our partners that are so faithful in giving, and we ask that you go to Shuva and go to our website at shalompalmbeaches.com and go to PayPal or go to our Temple Connect. And remember, it's not how much you give, but it's the fact that we do give. You know, it's the little bit that we give that adds up to help those in need. So we thank you tonight for joining us. And we invite you to, to come tomorrow morning at 1030, mm -hmm. when Rabbi will be having the Shabbat service. And we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise beautiful, God. Beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And don't, don't forget to follow, like, and share our Facebook page and our web and our website. Go to our website yes. and Shalom, um, Palm, Shalom Palm, Beaches. Palm Beaches. Let us pray. Yivarachad and I bishmaracha. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord causes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, b'shem, yeshua, mishikeno, b'sha, shalom. 
May he grant you peace, perfect peace, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. And we shall shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we also want to remind you about Goldie's book, uh, Rainbow in the Night, Amazon.com, and Rick's book, Love Stories from the Messiah, Amazon.com, and my book, The Talit, and Experience the Mysteries of, of the Prayer Show and Other Hidden Treasures, Amazon.com. We ask you to please be safe. Yes. Please stay healthy yes. and please be blessed. Be blessed. And we look and forward to seeing you tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning at 10 30. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.